Hello. In honor of Mental Health Awareness Month, I wanted to tell an updated version of our mental illness journey slash story. Um, so where to begin? Um, of course, you know, we have a trauma history, and for those of you who don't know, we have an extensive trauma history. Um, so in, oh goodness, 2010, I think, was the first time we saw a therapist. And we were in foster care at this point. Um, and they diagnosed us with PTSD and depression. And in 2013 was our first hospitalization. And when the body was 20 years old, No, was it 20? Yeah, 20 years old. Um, we were put on a ton of different psychiatric medications. At one point, we were on like eight different meds <clears throat> at once, which was not a good thing. Um, and um, we had known about the altars since I was... Five. I just didn't know at the time that that's what they were. Um, I had started struggling. <clears throat> Hold on. Um, sorry about that. Um, so we started struggling with an eating disorder when the body was eight years old as a way to cope with the trauma, since a lot of our trauma was around food, um, and have been struggling now for 19 years with said eating disorder. Um, I believe there are elements of ARFID and anorexia, because not all of us are anorexic and not all of us have ARFID. There's <clears throat> elements of both. Hold on a second, I'll be back. So, as I was saying, <clears throat> we've been struggling with an eating disorder for 19 years. Um, <clears throat> from 2013 to 2019, we have had 33, give or take a few, hospitalizations. Only one of those <clears throat> was an eating disorder, unit. the others were... Um, <laughs> general mental health and state hospital um, places and uh, uh, we went to college when the body was 22 I think um, got accepted to SIUE um, then had to medically withdraw after a year and a half of being there, so our last half semester did not, our last semester did not count. Um, so we had to medically withdraw because I was finding myself in classes with no clue how I got there, and that was not, um, that was not a good thing. Um, and then in after I withdrew, I was at home for a little bit with 
former foster mom, and then I went to live in a group home for people with mental illness. Uh, I was in the hospital three times in three months because they kept telling us they were going to get me into therapy, and they never did. Um, <clears throat> so then the third time I was in the hospital after I got out, they basically told me that I was that I couldn't live there anymore. So I went back home and then I had to go back into the hospital because I couldn't get my medications. And then I went to live in a mental health care, um, intermediate care facility. I lived there for a year and we had to go into the hospital again after that because of an assault that happened while we were there that wasn't able to be prosecuted because the police are stupid. And, um... So then when we got out of that facility, uh, or out of, out of that facility, we went into hospitals, and we were in hospitals for five months, and one of those hospitals was the state hospital, and that was not a good experience. Um, one of the nurses was very understanding. I'll never forget him. He was awesome. Um, and... Um, so then after we got out of the state hospital, we were discharged to what they told us was an intermediate mental health care facility, but it was actually a nursing home. Um, we were, we were given the wrong doses of meds, um, the assistive technology stuff was taken and stuff, and so then we, um, were in the emergency room for two weeks of our local hospital because <laughs> they didn't know where to put us. Nowhere would accept us. Uh, we were too complex. Um, yeah. And then we got out of this, the, um, we were in the psych unit of the local hospital for two months and then we moved here into the apartment that we live in now. And we've been here for two years. Um, we've been hospitalized since then. Um, our local ER is crud. I think I made a video about that, but if not, I can make another video about how our local ER treats us. But I think I already have. Um, sure, though. Um, and then we basically been fighting our insurance for two years to get residential treatment for eating disorders and trauma. We had the 13 therapists in one year and we finally found Lily. Um, we're trying to work with her. Um, it's harder since our eating disorder is trauma-based and we need residential treatment. Like that's what everyone's saying. We had the hearing. We haven't gotten a decision. Um, we got our DID diagnosis confirmed by like two psychologists because my insurance didn't believe us, which is uh, ridiculous. But um, and the laws in Illinois to cover residential treatment for adults with mental health issues, eh, they're not very clear. Um, so yeah, if anyone wants to know, like our stories with individual mental health conditions because we have PTSD, like diagnosis of PTSD, anorexia, dissociative identity disorder, and depression. Um, that's, that's our current diagnoses. Um, and we wanted to tell this story in honor of Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, we've dealt with suicide and suicidal attempts and things like that um you guys just let us know what you want us to talk about and we can maybe different alters from their perspectives um can you know i don't know though if they will or not but um that is a basic uh condensed version of our mental health story um so if anyone has any questions Comment down below, subscribe if you are new, give the video a big thumbs up. Always remember, live to inspire.
This is Ray signing off for now. Goodbye.